So far, we have used the inbuilt data types in order to describe data in, a, in our program. We have used the inbuilt types like int, care, float, long, double, and they are there within the compiler. So if I write int a, the compiler understand what I mean to say. But these inbuilt types are not sufficient to describe all data that we may need in our program. We may need to represent a complex number or rational number in our program and for that we don't have a type that is going to describe a complex number or rational number within the compiler. We may need to represent a student data or employee data and for that the best way is to declare a variable of student type or employee type but for that we don't have a an inbuilt student type or employee type within the compiler. For all such cases when we need to describe a type that is not inbuilt within the compiler we can just create our own type by using the struct keyword in C and when we do so we say that we are creating user defined types. Now while creating user defined types there are two things that we need to consider carefully. Number one the attribute of the type and number two the behavior for the type. The attribute is the value which describes the domain for the type for example, if we are considering a human type, then obviously the height of the human is an attribute, but smile of the human is actually a behavior for the human. The digest is not an attribute, it's a behavior. But if we are considering an attribute, that's going to contain some value. If we are considering student type, then obviously roll number is an attribute, but study is a behavior. If we are considering bank account type, then obviously account number is an attribute for the type. Uh, but the debit and credit operations are going to be the behavior for the type. So when we are going to create our own type for our purpose, then obviously we need to describe both the attributes as well as the operations or the behavior for the type. Let me just elaborate this conception with some example. Say we have this int type given within the compiler and we can create some variable using the int type. So a, b, c are three variables of type int. We can declare that. We are aware of this. We can also go ahead and write some operations, something like this. Now when we are using plus operator, it's going to add a with b and the result is going to be assigned to c using this operator assignment. Now this is not a magic, of course. If we are using the plus operator, it's not a magic that these two operands are added. There is a program written against each of these operators within the compiler. Had the integer type was only given and these operators were not given within the compiler, then it would be really hard to use int type variables in our program. Then we would require to write operations for our purpose. Then each time we need to add on integer, then we would require to write the program to, for adding integers. That would be really hard. So the creator of the inbuilt types they have supplied the operations with the inbuilt types as well in the form of these operators. They are given all these operators which are legitimate on a type and they are there within the compiler. So if we create our own type, it's our res responsibility to supply the operations with the type as well. We just cannot go on and declare the type without the behavior. Then that would be hard for the others to utilize our type. So we can create our own type and we need to define the operations as well as the attributes for the type. And in C, we have the keyword struct for this purpose. We can use the struct keyword in order to create our own type. Let's go ahead and declare a student type using the struct keyword. Okay, so struct keyword, then the tag that is the tag for student is the tag for the type. And we'll be using this student in order to create the allocation. Now remember that when we are declaring the type, it's only a description, a template. It's not allocation. Okay, so I'm declaring a roll number that can be one attribute. And remember that this is the block where we write the type description and there should be a semicolon at the end. So this is the attribute roll number. And then we have this, we may have a name for student. So that should be a character array and then we can have a great point. Okay, so there could be something more uh, email ID or guardian name or date of birth. So for my program or my example, I'm considering these are three attributes. There are three attributes for a student in my organization. So this is a type student. Now we have not 
defined any operation on this student type we have only declared the attributes as i said there is no allocation for this type only we have described the type and as far as this description is concerned this is a template and there is no allocation for this the allocation only takes place when we declare the objects objects are the real allocation for a type so if i just write student s1 s2 and s3 then each of these s1 s2 and s3 are three objects of type student that means s1 s2 s3 are real allocation for student type so in memory there will be three allocations and each of them is going to contain whatever we have described within the structure here so according to this description that is provided within the structure the allocation is going to take place that means s1 is going to have allocation for role four bytes then name an array and then grade point a double so it's going to have these three within the allocation and then obviously s2 is going to have identical uh, allocation because s1 and s2 both are students so they are going to be created according to the description that we have provided there in the struct student template so here also role name and grade point and similarly s3 is going to contain the same is going to be role name and grade point now we can access these attributes by using the object name and dot operator and then the attribute name so if i want to assign say five to the roll number of s1 object so i can just go ahead and write s1 dot you can see that the pop-up comes with the net pins roll equals to five so that means i'm assigning five to the roll number of student s1 and i can go ahead and assign roll s2 dot roll equals to 10 and I can assign grade point for the first student with 9.5 or 6. So this is how we access individual attributes of objects. But we need to define the operations on these student as well. So the operations comes according to the business rules. So we may need to write a grade printing operation you know, where the grade printing operation is going to examine the grade point and then print the grade accordingly so there may be operations for bank account as i said debit and credit for a particular bank account type there may be operations something like addition for a complex number that we need to write if we are going ahead and creating a complex number type so in the next tutorial we will see how we can do that thank you